yeah, I don't, I don't want to do the Thunderdome and none of that. I want to go to India <laughs> and wrestle there. Absolutely. And, and you know, we're getting there. It's slow. Mm -hmm. We're going to have setbacks. Yeah. You know, but I do believe we're going to get, um, and, and you and I both agreed we're, we're not, we're not going to talk politics or political and stuff, but I do believe yeah. that once we, once we get past this election day and all this stuff, and now we, whatever happens, yeah, you know, we've got to come together, not just as Americans, but as people mm -hmm. and just go, all right, hey, yeah. what do we, we got to help each other. We got to get through this. We got to figure out a way and we all got to come out stronger. You yeah. Know, so many, you know, it's just nice right now that there is pro wrestling going on even if it is the thunderdome like we our our profession never stopped that's the good thing no we didn't yeah, have there's no off season i i can't watch it without fans it's tough yeah but, yeah you know but now like the indie scene has uh really picked it up like warrior wrestling out of chicago yeah as i get choked up ran the first event that was very highly attended on August 7th, we were there covering mm -hmm. that. They ran a stadium series, uh, Independent Wrestling Expo in Dallas. And now just the indie show is coming back. We're yep. going to get there. We got to be safe. We got to do all the precautionary things to keep the talent like yourself safe and keep the fans safe. Um, yeah. I mean, but, I, you know, as a talent, I, I feel like I have a social responsibility to tell people to stay home. And like, at the same time, I have a responsibility to the promoters and the guys putting the hard work and, you know, hard earned money into it to come to the show. So it's a tough situation to be in. Right. Um, and like, like you said, like the whole political stuff, like once we get over that hump, I think things might start to normalize a little bit, but um, we do need to come together. Like I always tell people, you know, like in podcasts and interviews and stuff, they're just like, what's your nationality? And I'm like, well, my parents are Puerto Rican, but I'm human. You know, I don't really see that. Like, I don't really, I don't really, I don't understand the constant need for labels nowadays. It's like, what happened to just being a dude? Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, dude, we I think are, if, if we can so just go back to the same wavelength, people, like, let's just do it. And whatever it takes, you know, at this point. Um, as long as we don't sacrifice pro wrestling. Like, let's sacrifice football. You know, no one, come on. Oh, or football. Maybe, all right baseball i guess no one's you know soccer. Kind of soccer. yeah oh god that's like most of the world sports <laughs> i know we can't I think, we... <laughs> I think football you know as americans we always say oh football it's, it's um we're the only ones that call it a world series or a world championship and it's only held here <laughs> have you ever yeah. noticed that <laughs> a lot of the fans when we start especially in australia they were giving me a hard time about that i'm like you know have what you, you're right <laughs> did you watch australian rules football while you were there or have you seen it since yeah, um, I actually got schooled on how it works, and I'm actually a fan now. I actually watch it at home. Um, the badass sport, the, I love it. The rug, rugby stuff, yeah, dude, like it's insane. It's I couldn't do it without pads and, and all that. Those guys just go out there. It's one of that. the first grand, <laughs> final, grand finals I saw. The guy gets lifted up in the air. He's trying to get the ball, and he turns and falls and puts his arm out to break his fall. You see it snap. And the rest of these bastards are playing over him. Mm -hmm. They don't stop the game for that. They just kept going. And shout out to, I believe it is going to be on 3.40 a.m. So tomorrow, the grand final, Richmond Tigers versus right. the Geelong Cats. I'm sure this won't air. People already know the results. But if you get a chance, look up the Aussie Rules football. Uh, yeah, on, on, I think it's ESPN three. If you get it, you know that's that's how I find it. So oh, I got the ESPN app with it. It, it even has the oh, yeah, the app. It, I yeah, think. I got a yeah, five ninety nine. You can't beat that. No, it's it's insane. It's insanely cheap. Five ninety nine a month, and you talk about you go to Macca's and get your double cheeseburger and a drink. <laughs> that's your five ninety nine, right? That's there. right. I mean, but, yeah, you know, I mean, so you guys are wrestling travel. Do you guys ever warn people of the? Um, the conversion rates and how to be exact. No one warned me ever. Like, so my first, you know, especially um, like the Japanese conversion rate, I was like taking it back. Like, what do you mean this is 500? I'm not paying 500 for that. And it's like, dude, that's $4. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, 500 is cool. <laughs> you know, so. The, the like, cool I wish thing... someone would take me under their wing and be like, look, stupid, this is how it works. So. <laughs> The, the cool thing would, would, is that most of our travelers come from the United Kingdom where the pound is stronger than the dollar. Yeah, big time. So they come over here and they're like, yeah, whatever. That's yeah. easy. Yeah, I, the guys real. were at WrestleMania, guys were buying title belts at the WWE store. And then going Ugh. back the next day going, hey, I'm going to buy another one. And I'm like, Jeez. holy shit. Wow. Yeah, I know they're pretty marked up. How about the conversion when you go to Australia? And, dude, that was tough. I was going to get, like, a, a Australian Rules football T-shirt. 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, it's – it's and, um, like, Canada's lower than the dollars. So I know, like, um, they don't really have pennies or cents and all that. But I, I had these – um, their coin is a dollar, right? Or it's $2. Two is a um, – their big, like, gold coin. And, uh, and I'm, as an American, we know coins to be lesser than anything else. So I had this whole bag of these coins. I'm like, hey, man, um, I got to do something about these coins. Cause... And actually, AJ uh, Sanchez, he's like, hey, um, you kind of got a lot of money in there. And I'm like, no, it's this coin. He's like, no, each one of those is $2. So a dollar American is more. So like, I ended up like trading them in and having like, I think it was like 50 bucks, 50 American dollars. So I was like, damn, almost this, just left this in my bag as a souvenir. <laughs> so. You know, the, the countries that don't have dollar bills, like it's always mm. tough. To figure, and you do not have to go down this road with me because I'm beyond this and you have an image to uphold. But I'm just saying, <laughs> when you only got coins for dollars, your strip yeah. clubs work really differently. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably like it turns the job into like such a hard like it's such a hard job, you know. Like, how do you? Ah, oh, man, that's gotta hurt. Well, dude, it's tough, man. I'm up in Canada at a strip club, and uh, you know, I'm used. To, I got the paper money, and you know, while she's doing the lap dance, she has to stop and make change. Oh, it it kind of ruins the vibe, dude. I'm joking. That one just came off the top of my head. So, oh man. <laughs> all right. Meanwhile. Back at professional rep. First of all, I want to oh, something you said before struck me. Okay. When you said I'm I'm a human. When I was in mm. college, I took a multicultural class, which was required. The professor asking everybody, "What is your nationality?" Mm -hmm. You know, are you? you oh, I'm German. I'm Italian. They get to me. I said, "I'm American." No, nope, you can't be. Right. No, I am. I get that, and he, mm. the dude would have failed me right there, and I ended up getting a D in the class. And I know it's because <laughs> of this, because I said, I'm not trying to be a little asshole. I know you think I am, but at what point, no matter where my grandparents came from, we do not celebrate any of the traditions. Right. I don't have, but at what point can I become an American? Yeah. At what point do we cut old ties and? be ourselves you know so that's kind of what yeah that's kind of what i mean when i say that it's well you just said like, human now that really struck a note with me because i'm like yeah yeah and like my parents are puerto rican their parents are puerto rican uh until i went and wrestled in puerto rico i've never been so like does that make me puerto rican no i don't think so I, you know why i'm like dude that's why i'm loving this conversation because you know I, I went looking for pro wrestling after hanging out with my teammates in football, another one of the guys went. And then, meanwhile, I'm the only yeah, one there. basically like me. <laughs> yeah, so we've got, you know, and that's that's a cool thing. Because small town Wisconsin, New York City, Puerto Rico, just a dumb kid from the farm. And we've got that similar pathway. If anything in the world doesn't say we're just all part of the human race. I don't yeah. know what does right there, you know? See, you know, I always tell people, especially in the South, you know, because some of those conversations can, can get tough. But I always tell them, like, look, we're not going to see eye to eye on everything. But if we flip through the book, I'm pretty sure we'll be on the same page about a few about a few things, you know? So, like, they're like, oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. I'm like, yeah, like, you can talk, you can talk about anything with anybody and, like, find some common ground on anything. And that's kind of what, you know, that's, that's being mature, that's being a person, that's being a human being. 
but uh, I don't just, it's like I said, it's a weird time and then Corona doesn't help at all. <laughs> this is probably, it's like literally there's a small fire and then you throw Corona in there. It's like adding like a gallon of gasoline to it. So it's uh it's a weird time, man. Like, uh, like you said, like thank God for pro wrestling, right? So yeah, it's a wild. Let's get back to pro wrestling because we're in danger of becoming a political talk show. And I don't, we, you, you and I don't need a, a deal with uh, the National The Young Turks. Turks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Um, you've mentioned a lot of names I want to talk about, and I want to be respectful of your time. So you sure, just no, give, yeah, me the, no give me the Iggy and go, hey, I got to go. I don't want, but um, you mentioned them by first name only. I know off camera you did, but talk to me about Tony Atlas. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tony, uh, Miss, Mr. Atlas, Tony Atlas, whatever you want to go. <laughs> I just know him as Tony. Um, dude, talk about, like, I'm sure you've had that guy who um, didn't need to do anything for you, didn't need to say, hey, look, you're being stupid. Hey, you can do this better. Hey, if you wore this kind of gear, it would look better on you. Hey, these colors look better. Hey, get some damn boots. <laughs> Uh, uh, I mean, this guy's a multi, um, Hall of Famer in the two things that I really, really are pa I'm passionate about, which is bodybuilding and, and, and pro wrestling. He's a Hall of Famer in both. Um, and a lot of people do forget that. Like, we always think Arnold, but, uh, Tony's like right behind him as far as prestige in that world too. Um, so like just teaching me how to like work out and doing things the right way and, um, there's, 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 there's workout and, and different movements that I still do in the gym that I, if you go back and like on my Facebook and stuff, um, there's like this four minute video. Well, it was like filmed over like three days of going to the gym straight with Tony. I still use that stuff every day. The things I learned, uh, from him. And, uh, I mean, we're, we've gotten so close that like I told you, you know, I just found out that we're doing the roast of Franco Varga, which I wasn't super, uh, <laughs> I wasn't super keen on it until I saw uh, who it's uh, being hosted by. And it's Tony Atlas, right? And uh, later I, I actually found out it was his idea to begin with. <laughs> so um, he never had to take the time with me. He really, I was just a um, kid with trying to make a little bit of a name. And I came up to Maine and, and I was, you know, they were treating me like I was super over and he's in the building and he's, I'm just like, I'm wrestling Tony out. was sweet. This is going to be great. He was, uh, he was so imp like, I don't know. I don't know if impressed is the right word, but he was so just, I guess maybe saw a little bit of himself or something or just saw that I could use to help. And he didn't have to, and he did that for me. And um, I'm like grateful to this day. Uh, I always check on him. He was one of the first people I called when I found out, you know, about Corona and how it affects everybody and things. And it was, you know, so I've always checked on him. Like, he's just one of those guys that just, like, he's just a bro. He just will tell you how it is and tell you how to do things. There's no there's no uh, gray area. You know, it's always black and white with Tony. It's always just this is how it is. Um, and he had a hell of a career. I mean, he's still still out there it's killing it. Damn, <laughs> he's still out there headlining some some shows that I've you know been on. Actually, February we're on a show together, and jam packed show to see Tony Alice. You know, fifty years later from from when he was you know just starting out. So he's just one of those guys, man, that I'm like super 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 grateful to have in my life, and. Um, uh, <laughs> Like, uh, so I, I'll tell you why the whole roasting happened. Um, after, after hanging out with him for, you know, maybe like a year or so, like I, I'm, I'm really big on ribs. Um, it's kind of what it keeps me going. <laughs> it's kind of what keeps me going, you know, even when I'm overseas, like I, I still respect him, still professional, but I, um, I, uh, I still play ribs, you know, that's just what I do. But Tony's uh, always, every time I'm around Tony, he's my target for the day. I'm always doing something to annoy him. This, um, I think one of the funniest ones, and I'll, I'll send you the video, I got to find it, but um, I went up to the promoter. I said, hey, man, um, did you pay Tony yet? And he's just like, oh, I'm about to get him. You know, like, he thought I was kind of getting on his case, like, hey, you better pay Tony. But no, I was just like, hey, do me a favor. Um, can you pay him in all once? 
And he's just like, well, well why? And I'm like, well, it does, it, it's going to take him a long time to count it. So I just want to, I want to get it on, on video and stuff and just mess with him. So he's like, oh, this ain't right, but okay, you know. <laughs> so then um, he's sitting there counting and counting and counting. And I asked him, hey, what, what year you start wrestling again? He's like, oh, 1972. Oh, man, come on. See, that's start all over. <laughs> and then he's sitting there counting and counting and counting. I'm like, hey, Tony, what, uh, do you want to maybe get a, like a, what do you want to do? You want to hit the buffet or something? That's his favorite food is buffet food. Um, Chinese buffet. And he, he'll find, I don't know how he does it. He must have like a special app, but like he just finds Chinese buffets randomly. <laughs> but uh, I'm just like, hey, you want to hit the buffet after this? You wanna? He's like, yeah, man, you find, you see one? And I'm just like, oh, I'll find one. And he's like, oh man, I got to start over. So after a few times, he kind of caught on. <laughs> and he started getting the boys to give him higher, bigger bills. And I kept, <laughs> kept just laughing at him. So he's like, I'm going to get you back for this. You know, I'm going to get you back for this. And uh, I, think, I think he's probably, whatever he's got planned, it's in December. Whatever he's got planned is probably going to be, uh, I got it coming to me, whatever it is, I'm sure. So, <laughs> well, yeah. Let's, let's pause for a second. Give us the date. What's going on? How can, as fans, what's happened? This is a virtual event? Yeah. So, I, um, like I said before, uh, it's, a, it's socially responsible, right? That's what we should be doing. Um, so, I would love for the fans to come out and see this. But at the same time, I'm never going to tell you to come out and do something that's going to be uh, in any chance um, harmful to you, right, or anyone. So, um, it, we're going to do it virtually. It's, uh, I think it's just going to be me and Tony in the room and the guys producing it. And, um, and then there'll be a bunch of um, Hall of Fame and, and good friends of mine sending in videos. And I've actually seen a couple of, God, they're brutal. Brutal. I thought these guys liked me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all in good fun. And, um, I mean, some of the names are, you know, um, they're, I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to. I don't want to give anything away. But definitely some guys wearing some Hall of Fame rings, and definitely guys that have helped me over the years. So, yeah. Um, and and we'll you know we'll drop where it's where it's being hosted and all that. I'll keep you guys posted on it. But it'll yeah, be on so one of the. Do you know the date? Uh, December eighteenth. December eighteenth. That's what I, I didn't write it down. And we it's it's hard when when you have an interview with a guy like yourself, and I'm doing this for the fans and you end up shooting the breeze for 40 minutes before you even hit the record button it's tough to to try to remember what we what we've actually talked about in the in the session and whatnot so december 18th guys and and we'll we'll uh we'll get that out on wrestling travel and and help push that to people to, to kind yeah of you know over out. the over the years, me and Tony have wrestled a few times, so I know some of the pictures that are being signed by me and him are going to be um uh pretty high like i know i'm trying to keep them i'm trying to get them like give it away at, at a decent price you know and then tony's got, doing his own stuff he's got his artwork um and then yeah i'll be there too i guess so <laughs> so you got your you name wanna, on it you, you might as well show up <laughs> yeah so you might as well you know i guess maybe get one of my signed pictures or not whatever it's just me but uh well, but you but guys no, I, will you guys ship to the uk for our friends yeah in the yeah UK? Yeah, oh yeah, they they um I, they are already anticipating having to ship to Australia and, and Japan and Canada and the UK. So they're prepared from what I've been told. So um which is really cool to kind of like wrestle in so many different countries and like sign and have see that stuff go out to all those people that have that I've, you know, wrestled in front of and that are still keeping in touch with me and still keeping uh keeping tabs on me, you know. Um it was pretty crazy to see like my Facebook have like 5,000 followers from all over the world. I'm just like, that's insane. I, the, I, last time I checked this thing, it was like 500 followers. <laughs> I'm not super savvy on, you know? You need to get those followers on Facebook. You need to drop a message to them today going, follow me on Twitter. Mm. You got to get your Twitter going. That's what I, that's what my boss yeah. told me. And I went I gotta, from like, I, I got to do that. Because I, I got went from like, like ten followers thousand. to a thousand. Yeah. Yeah, I got like a thousand naturally. I haven't really used it. Like you like you know, I don't really go on there as much. And I actually used to use a, an app that did it all in one shot. And then um, oh, cool. so but apparently it's not it's not uh, as effective as I thought because it doesn't come over as cool. 
So I just started kind of putting more time into Twitter and, and stuff and actually interacting with people on Twitter more. So I'm, I'm kind of getting the hang of it. So yeah, I'll definitely do yeah, that. Cool, man. Um, so you've inspired me. I'm going to reach out again to Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. I sent him a message in the summer. Um, I've perfected my craft here as an interviewer, I believe. I'm getting rid of the ums and ahs, but I did send him out um, an invitation to be on the lockdown sessions to which he probably said, who's this guy? Uh, oh, but I'm going to send it through our verified Twitter this time, I think. Okay. Well, how about... We've got the blue tick. I just help. I can just shoot him a text and say, hey, do this podcast. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> there we go. If yeah. we can do that, that'd be great too. But yeah, we got a uh, Tony Atlas. Uh, man, I've never got a chance to be in the same the same room with them, but legendary. Um, you got to, we're going to go behind the scenes here. I've seen the Legends House. Mm -hmm. Is that legitimately his laugh yeah yeah Dude, i love <laughs> yeah. that that's awesome yes oh my <laughs> gosh and it's just like sitting there you imagine like that laugh and like thinking it's funny and then like having to stand there next to him as he's talking to someone else like a fan or something and not laugh at his laugh like you know it's it's like the hardest thing in the world to do <laughs> not to just start busting out laughing no, that's Willie's really laugh. Yeah, that's big old jolly. I'm just, he could be Santa Claus if he really wanted to, you know. I give him such a hard time, but he's he's one of my favorite people ever. So, <laughs> well, let's talk about another legend. We talked about legendary Ron Simmons, legendary Tony Atlas, but now, um, you talking about you do doing a show with Ricky Morton weekly? What's that mm -hmm. all about? Is it are we talking about a wrestling weekly show or? Yeah, every Sunday. It airs every Sunday and Saturday. Um, so um, it's called uh, School of Morton. And uh, it's, if, what's it, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Pivot Share, and um, gosh, just one more. And it's, it goes out live. They have over 100,000 people watching it uh, when it's live. So it's really like, uh, it's a huge accomplishment for Ricky and, and his people. He's got a great team there. James and Ryan and those guys are they're awesome. And they they come from like really strong backgrounds when it comes to like, you know, obviously they get a hundred thousand viewers live. That's probably, that's kind of hard for a normal TV to the show to do. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a cool little hour and a half show. Um, it's the school of Morton. So most of the people on the show, he's either trained or, um he's bringing in to help um train his like like i'm one of the guys where i'm working directly with the heavyweight champion um that's this weekend again um and i just love working for ricky because he see he sees me in the parking lot how's how's the drive how are things and then he's just like hey um it's on you well i've i've been around those guys and been around the really heavily produced shows and it's like this is what i need you to do here's your script Here's this, there's this, there's this. Uh, there's that trust where he's just like, yeah, whatever you whatever you do, this is the time I need you to do it under. And whatever you want to do, go, go for it. You know, I, I, um, that's another one of those things where you kind of sit with yourself and go, man, kind of coming along, right? <laughs> so, so, um, so, yeah, I'm super, like, grateful every week, every Sunday I get to um, just be around him. He's one of the, one of the funniest – inspiring just positive guys i mean he literally um uh when the whole and the entire internet is crapping on joey janela he goes out and works with him uh they do spring break and he looks like a superstar he has nothing and he's just like you're not allowed to say anything bad about janela around him because he's just like it's all about the brotherhood we're all just trying to entertain people and most of the experts aren't really experts. That's what he says. So, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm super grateful to be around him and work under him for, you know, every week like I have been, yeah. Joey Janela, just really quickly, um, if, if I read the not so-called expert stuff on Twitter in the internet, right. which is a dangerous, dangerous super path dangerous. of all. God. If you go on Twitter and you check, you know, I mean, we all suck, according to Twitter. Even right. me. You know, like, yeah. we all suck, according to Twitter. 
And it's just like, so then why watch? <laughs> like, we, should, we should all pack it up and go home. There should be no more pro wrestling. I, I issued a public apology to Joey Danella a few weeks ago. Not because I, I never dogged him. I don't believe in dogging people in public, but I was always kind of like, eh, I don't, you know, just hear the stuff and then not, not think I know everything, but not really watch a whole Janela match. And then I got to watch him against Jake something on August 7th at Warrior Wrestling. And I'm going, nobody else is surprised but me because I haven't freaking watched the whole match. I'm like, well, this is yeah. pretty good. And then a month later, I see him against War Horse. Mm. Like, Shit. And then, then I, uh, I do a quick interview at the at the Fan Fest. Hey, we're live blog in the UK. Can you talk about your match? Yeah, absolutely. Do you need anything else? I mean, a consummate professional. And then I watch him. I'm sure. I hope you've seen him. At Marion Catholic High School, jump off the goalpost <laughs> in the end zone oh, against Robert Anthony and Frank the Clown. I mean, and that's when I said, dude, if awesome. I can do it, anybody can do it. You sleep on somebody. You, 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 and even though we're in the business, you hear a few things and all of a sudden in your head you think, oh, yeah, I know what that guy's all about. And you don't until you watch somebody. Yeah. No, I, I definitely uh... – sympathize with him too because i used to get a lot of the fans would be like oh man they, and it's crazy when they come up to you and say man i used to think like your stuff was so boring when i first saw you and then like man tonight you just definitely changed my mind like holy crap that was awesome can i buy a shirt can i have this and that and it's like i could just be like an a-hole and be like oh never boring you know but it's just like it's so subjective that like i love randy Orton, i love his work i love all that a lot of people think he's boring um i um i love ag's wrestling i thought it you know it's never it's never going to be the same it's never going to be um as good as drawing and keeping people emotionally attached as, as, as it was in the 80s and people think that it was boring some people think they can't just can't watch 80s wrestling so it's like it's subjective some people love uh a lot of the new stuff some people can't watch an episode of AEW. so it's like you can't make everybody happy, but I think every show should have something on it so that it gives everybody something to be happy about. You know, you might not like uh, Doink the Clown, but at least Bret Hart was there. Uh, you might not like Shawn Michaels, but at least the, the Big Boss Man was on the show for you. You know, it's like there's different things where I think wrestling, I think when we all focus on being the dude with eight abs and looking like this everybody else that's kind of when it starts to be boring i get a lot i take a lot of stuff on our podcast because they know me i'm a traditionalist and when mjf and jericho did their little <laughs> song and dance they're all looking at me and i go listen i don't like it because i was brought up on we should make this the protect the business. Mm -hmm. We need to make this believable and this and that. But I'm also going, hey, who am I to say anything if it's putting asses in seats and people love it? Yeah. I'm going to shut my mouth. I'm. But if you ask me my opinion, I'm like, hey, you know what? I didn't so, like so, let me ask, so let me ask yeah. you. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this time. So uh -oh. so you see, you didn't like uh, you didn't like them doing that, and um, that's a good example of that. So let me ask you. If they would have not, if they would have done it the way they did it on national TV, but not called it pro wrestling, would it have changed your mind? Yeah, hundred percent. It would have been. You know what I mean? But that that would have been super thing. entertaining, right? It would have been. It's <laughs> entertainment, and that's 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 the thing. And I, right, it, and that's why I do. I I I toe the line. Mm -hmm. So I try to tell people me. like, there's things in a pro wrestling show that. It's okay to have things that are non-pro wrestling in a pro wrestling show today. If you remind yourself that like, okay, that part wasn't pro wrestling, but it's within a pro wrestling show, I think we'd be a lot more, a lot better off. You know what I mean? So like that wasn't pro wrestling, but it happened in a pro wrestling show. So like most people get mad, like that shouldn't be on a pro wrestling show. It's like the intermission of a TV show, if you think about it. 
because at intermission on, on indie shows, I hate some of the music they play. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. I'm like, why are you playing Backstreet Boys? But it's like, that's like me saying intermission doesn't belong in an indie show. Like that's, most people be like, how do you go have a show without intermission? So it's like, that's kind of how I try to see it. I try to stay open-minded and I try to say, okay, that wasn't pro wrestling, but it happened within a pro wrestling show. But it's entertaining, even if it wasn't for me. And if I stop and think about it, and I love the 80s wrestling, and I go back to RoboCop saving Sting, I go back to uh, Ric Flair winning a date with Precious and Ron Garvin showing up in drag. I go, yeah. it's all The wedding? Uh, the Macho yeah. Man wedding? Macho Man wedding. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, we've... You know, we always forget, like, we try to romanticize, like, the 80s and 90s and Attitude Era. They did some wild, dumb stuff, too, you yeah, know, that absolutely. wasn't really pro wrestling, you know? Um, Billy Gunn and, and, and the, the whole wedding when they did that. But yeah, Billy and Chuck. Yeah. So, like, today, if they did that today, they, 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 people would throw a fit. <laughs> so. Katie Vick and all that stuff. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Anything Austin and McMahon. You know, like nowadays would be like, why is this on TV? You know, so this depends. It's it always changes, and it's 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 as long as it's entertaining to some, I think it's okay to for it to be in a pro wrestling show because we're trying to entertain all. Like, D. Malenko versus William Regal is gonna entertain half the crowd and bore half the crowd, and then Jericho and MJF going off on a tangent is going to entertain the other half of the crowd and bore the other half of the crowd. So as long as they got something, I think it's okay. Yeah. No, I mean, th that's where I agree. But when, when I, you know, somebody, would, they, my podcast, they love to bust my chops. Yeah. Uh, when, whenever anything non-wrestling comes up and I'm like, you know, hey, but I'm like, I don't, here's what I really don't like. Here's where we go. Let's get real. I don't like but I don't argue with it because it sells tickets. But I was brought up the cage match, the the death match was a blow off for a feud. And now we got feds that run the night of the death match. To me, it does it I sound like somebody who was born in 1920 and trying to explain cell phones or something now. But uh to me, I'm like it doesn't make sense. But then again, I go, guys, what the hell does my opinion matter? If they're selling out, just it's just not for me. I got offered to do a death match when I was very young. We're going to replace the ropes with barbed wire. Okay. I'm already in my head going, I ain't doing this. But just for shits and giggles, what does that pay? All right. Hey, kid, we're going to give you, get this, $25. Yeah, no, not for me. A whopping twenty five dollars. <laughs> we're gonna need you to bleed. The, the 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 word was we're gonna need you to bleed heavily. Nah, no, jeez, couldn't do it. Look, so, somebody's gonna do it. It ain't me. You know what I'm saying? I applaud yeah. that person. I applaud that style of, of like I said, wrestling. So, um, but yeah, it ain't me. It ain't for me. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I, you, I totally feel you. Do you think that that type of match? is like an endangered species in this the current climate of the world like if we do get back to normal yeah or, or some sense of normal that the the bloody matches because i i mean i don't know i'm just asking and this is purely an opinion to me it doesn't seem like it seems like if if people are going to come after pro wrestling the general society that that's going to be one of the first styles of matches to go Right. No, I think uh, death matches are actually contrary to, to, you know, I think they're going to thrive when things come back because um, most of them are done outdoors. So when you look at them, most of them are done outdoors. Um, yeah, you get the, the stuff from the light tubes and all that, but you're outdoors. So guess what? If they wanted to run a full show right now, they could because they're outdoors. They're, that Their fan base, their niche is going to be um, they already are used to that, where if you take a casual wrestling fan and tell them, oh, the show's going to be outdoors today, they're not coming to that. 
so so I think I think the death match scene will will thrive and there'll be there'll be some guys that weren't doing death ma- death matches before doing death matches because there's not as much to do but um but I think their niche I mean those are some of the most hardcore fans you know their niche uh takes care of the wrestlers and and um man I mean guys like Schlack and um Oh man, there's there's those tons of guys that make a living just based on their niche taking care of them because they know they're literally beating their bodies to a pulp for them, Could, just ruining their skin and on top of all the the stuff that happens to a pro wrestler in the ring, you're ruining your skin and you're doing all this crazy cutting yourself all. They're gonna they take care of them, so that's like. I kind of am a little jealous of them sometimes because I'm like, man, like their fans go hard for them, hard. You know, the, the, the thing I feel bad for them is that guys like you and I, we're just too pretty to do stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it. I wasn't going to yeah. say it. But I was thinking it. <laughs> um, so December 18th, yeah. the roast of Franco Varga is going to happen and we're going to – we're going to push that. Um, I, I said I want to be respectful of your time, and we went a long yeah. time. And, and I always – dude, I can't no, wait to do – This was super fun. I can't wait to do a part two because part ones are always like, hey, we get, we get the past out of the way, and now yeah. we've cleared that training and stuff, and we're ready. But my final question for you well, – actually, no. We're going to go two questions. Okay, cool. Uh, or a couple. I always say we're going to be respectful. What is no, the I only have time for one. No, it's just, oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Prima Donna. What, what's the best piece of advice that you've received thus far in your if – you, if you can pinpoint it down to one or two things that maybe you, – you've hung I, out with some veterans. Yeah, no, I – um, you know, ah, uh, man, I remember like it was yesterday. So um, we were in um, – Saskatoon, I always mess that up, Saskatoon, Canada, and um, the night before I had a match with a guy that I just didn't enjoy, so I was just all in my head, the whole car ride, and um, Ron, you know, he kind of knew, he kind of let me gel in my own stuff, right? The next day, um, I took it upon myself to have a really good match, and uh, just to get over the, the night before, and Ron grabs me by my singlet, and I thought I did something wrong. So I was like, oh, great. This is going <laughs> to suck. And he looks me right in the eyes, and he goes, when are you going to stop doubting yourself? When are you going to let these stupid little things bother you? Or when are you going to let them stop letting these stupid little things bother you? When are you going to actually get out of your own way? And, like, that was some of the best advice I've ever gotten. Is just, like, you can do this if you just stop worrying about the little stuff. Stop telling yourself you suck. Stop telling yourself you're not good enough or you're not The Rock or you're not Austin or you're not, just do it, you know? Like like Shia LaBeouf, just do it, right? <laughs> uh, so that was like, I knew he was super serious. I know we were normally like really, um, we talk, you know, it was just always fun and games around each other, but he was super serious and and I was just like, Yes, sir. Like, that was one of those times where I was like, oh, I better not make a joke. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, I, I understand. I get it. You know, like, okay. And it was something to think about. And I've thought about it ever since. And I, every time I'm like, oh, should I go to this place? Or, oh, man, is my name big enough to go do that? Or, and I'm just like, what am I talking about? Just get out of your own way. Go do it. You know, I recently, like, I'm going to start auditioning for movies and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, man, am I even a big enough name in indie wrestling to try to do movies and use that to kind of help me, you know, get in the door that way and all that. I'm just like, why am I bothering worrying about it? I'm just going to go there and knock and be like, hey, I'm here for the audition. (laughs) So... Um, I just actually did one um, for a video game, and they were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we looked you up, man. Awesome, loved your stuff. We loved the um, that. I don't know if, if you saw the It Was Me Baby stuff that's that I've been doing. Was I um, I take poops all around the world and destroy toilets, and I, it was me, baby. So they loved that. 
Um, there's even a T-shirt that was on Pro Wrestling Tees that that um, um, was really really cool that and it pays really really well to be dumb to do dumb stuff on the internet. So, so that's uh, but yeah, advice wise, that's the best advice I've ever gotten was when are you gonna stop? So, yeah. Um, l- let's get real serious for a minute uh, based on that last answer. Um, and, and you can be real here. You can be open. But I thought Ron, I was. <laughs> Ron, no, but I mean, just, just be honest. When I called you to do this interview, Ron Simmons was the one that says, you got to do this interview with Clapper. Wrestling travels the greatest. Uh, yeah. Sure. You can't even go uh, with me on that one. You're like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think I can so. say that. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think he knows, uh, but I will – um, make sure I tell him that to, to say that. So it'll happen in the future. It'll happen in the future. Okay. It'll happen. Um, so we'll, we'll do like the time cop situation where I'll there. tell myself to say it. So we'll go back and watch it in the future. <laughs> Are you on TikTok, by the way? I am on TikTok. Um, okay. There's actually a really dumb video of uh, um, why you don't touch your wife's makeup. Go watch that one. So I, I got to make sure I follow you because – I it's all, you know, all at Franco Wrestles. I, I'm super lazy with that stuff. So I just try to make all my social medias the same thing. Well, I stupidly made one just to follow wrestling travel. Nice. And um, Franco, at Franco Wrestler, Wrestles. Yeah. For everybody out there. So I made one. It's purely wrestling clips. I don't do anything dumb on there. I just take a cool clip like I filmed at a show. Set it to some music. Here's a hint. Take any high spot, set it to run DMC. It's tricky. It's going to look like you planned for hours on how to set that to, to music. So I'm, I'm at 19,000 followers, and I've now wow. got an email from them asking me about if I want to cr- do a creator uh, thing and, and nice. monetize, which I might do, but that's neither. The reason why I bring it up, have you ever just kind of perused TikTok? Of course. Like yeah. you, so what is with, and you, you touched on it with Ron Simmons in the time. Have you seen all these time travelers on TikTok? Yeah. It's insane. It is. We, and, they've been among us forever. <laughs> and I, I love them because they're almost all the same formula. People have asked me who's going to win the election. And I don't know how long a TikTok goes. Like, does it go 30 uh, seconds or whatever? I think it's a minute, actually. Oh, a minute. minute. And they go, yeah, because I've been asked this question, um, you know, and, and a lot of you have asked me, and I, and I need to prove to you right now that I'm from the year 2030. Because I've been here trying – get to the freaking point, dude. Yeah. Never do. So I, never I, I think <laughs> that I might start another yeah. one where I'm a, I'm a time traveler and I'll just – I'll just never get to the freaking point. <laughs> right. So, so at Franco wrestles on TikTok, and my most important question, my final question of this interview, because I am going to get you back on, um, drop your socials and uh, where can we get merch and, and remind us again? How yeah. Roast um, and so, so big, the big thing for, for me soon Um with restrictions hopefully not affecting anything and everybody being safe. Uh, my big return to the UK, um, very anticipated by a lot of the fans over there. I actually got, um, I think it was 21 messages from the second, I was like within five minutes of me posting that, that I was coming back to work for title. 21 messages, you'd have thought my phone was on fire. So I'm super, like I said, they're the Rowdies fans. And um, so I'm like super grateful for 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 that and um march it'll be march uh two i'll be in the uk for two weeks in march the the last two weeks of march um and the title show that's been announced so far is march 27 um but yeah it was insane like i I was just like what's going on what's what's happening is this people like yo i just seen it oh my god you're you're coming back i was just like oh okay (laughs) so um, social media, I try to do uh, some some comedy stuff, and like you'll see on TikTok, and it was me, baby, and um, I just I did a promo for a company uh, in the Mid Atlantic that I was sitting on a toilet, and I got like sixteen thousand views. So like it's the dumb stuff, right? I can wow, I can yeah. do a perfect suplex. I can uh, you know I have a pretty sweet looking finisher. 
two views. And then like I, I, I take a fake dump somewhere, thousands of views. It's, the internet's so weird, right? <laughs> so yeah. everything, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, at Franco Wrestles. Uh, FrancoVarga.com takes you to links to just get to all of that. Um, try to make it easy, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then uh, merchandise. Um, I just, uh, I have the ProWrestlingTees.com slash Franco. Uh, that store is actually going away. There's a new um, venture coming out. Uh, it's called Drop Down Elite Frog. It's a new, it's a new uh, pro wrestling tea st- style store. Uh, for us, by us, kind of thing for pro wrestlers. So that's, that's awesome. something I dog with. So so that you'll see that next year. Can't wait. That's awesome, Franco Varga. You know, oh, before we go, the biggest. Um, I know you're like yeah, <laughs> OVW. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you currently? Are you currently with OVW? You've been with them in the past, or what's yeah. the yeah. what's the OVW status? So Ohio Valley Wrestling, um, I was man, I love those guys. Al Snow, Chad uh, Miller, um, I I did a little bit with them, and there was actually a match film, a couple matches filmed for Impact there uh, when they were doing the whole. Uh, they were developmental for Impact for a while too. Yeah. Now they're off on their own. They're at uh, YTA, which is a national uh, carrier for them. So super happy for them. I don't. Uh, Fine. Yeah, I'll be back in the future. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say. Right. I don't want to say when. Uh, I, 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 I. That's the thing I, I hate about the internet. I love the internet. I love my phone. I love the things that I've seen. The people, all the cat videos, all the TikTok dances, all that crazy stuff. The memes, which, uh, like I told you before, I, I've been memed a few times. And at first, I didn't appreciate it, but after you know, my wife actually kind of showed me like it's actually a pretty cool thing to be memed. So. Keep them coming, right? But <laughs> um, I don't like the, what the internet does to pro wrestling. There's no more surprises. I think the last major surprise uh, was the Hardy Boys coming back. Like, there should be way more. But we always know about it days ahead. Somebody leaked something. You know, so I'm big on, on uh, I'll let you know, but I'm not going to tell you when. So, you know, and that's the thing with doing this show. Like, I want to help people out. But there's something in me that goes, listen, if I could just, and I don't do it, but if I could just get somebody to leak something, some big story, <laughs> I could be the pride of Twitter for 24 hours that <laughs> this got leaked right here on the lockdown sessions. And then people would go, I got to tune in and subscribe. But I'm always like, yeah, too res- yeah. I'm like, dude, I don't want to know any dirt. I just want to get it done. So I think, but, I think uh, the days of kayfabe are gone true but uh, we can we can kind of redevelop and kind of start getting tight lips because what it does it really gets people um that that shock factor that wow factor that shock value of like oh it's you know whoever like i didn't see that coming but it's like oh i guess such and such is on raw tonight you know goes back to the yeah puts yep. <laughs> like why do we what's what happened when did that happen when the need to know like when did that happen? You know, I don't know. got too lazy to watch, and I think you're right. You keep <laughs> tight lipped, and you know what? Tune in, check it yeah. out. And hopefully, there's a surprise, and you go, "Hey, I gotta check out OVW. I gotta check out ECW. I gotta check out whatever it is." So, all mm-hmm. right, we've went 27 questions beyond my final question. So, out of due respect to you, in hoping that when I contact you for part two, you're not going, "Oh, geez." I got to say, you owe me time. So, you owe me time for the second part. So we'll do, we'll take it off. <laughs> yeah, <second> absolutely. Part. <laughs> part two is going to be a five minute, like a hey, yeah, five seconds. Hey, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so on behalf of wrestling travel and true Hill heat, Franco Varga, I just want to, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Uh, the UK fans, thank you so much for, for all the support over the years and, and for the bombardment of messages so far. Uh, I will be back. Um, hopefully, again, like I said, uh, Corona go away, right? And <laughs> but uh, I will be back. And that's, you know, we've only put out one show so far. So I'll be there for two weeks. And uh, hopefully uh, I can, I can um, it'll be some cool surprises. And then, of course, uh, everyone around the world that have, that have supported me and if I've res- ever wrestled in front of you, 
um, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you so much for supporting independent wrestling throughout the years. So thank you, thank you. We couldn't do it without you. We tried and it doesn't look so good, right? <laughs> so please come back when things normalize. Thank you so much.